On this very special holiday episode, I talk Russian accents, how to find a co-founder, content before website, and what's my almond. You ask questions, and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay Nurchuk, and welcome to episode 47 of the Ask Gary V Show. Happy Thanksgiving. One more time before I go into the questions, super excited about Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday of the year, looking forward to it in a couple hours, driving to Jersey with the whole fam, me and AJ, are, we, me and AJ bought a very expensive case of basketball cards from last year. We're gonna open up packs, trying to get those Anthony Davis rookie cards. That's his wingspan. Mine's not quite as long. Uh, I'm excited about that. Might play football tomorrow morning. Little Friday tradition that is not a tradition, but I'm gonna try to like make it one. Uh, meaning we had it going for two or three years, but I think AJ's friends have continued it, so might do that. But just good, good time. Might even stop by the wine library. On Saturday, we'll get back into that a little bit at the end of the show. Uh, and uh, just super happy, appreciate all the support. Big shout out to the podcast peeps listening as they're working out or pissed off in traffic. Let's get into the show. Alan asks, should I wait until my website is 100% built before putting out content or put out content while I'm building it? Alan, there's a dude by the name of Tommy Matola. Google him up, who once said something to me in a private meeting. He said, you know, I never let any of my artists go on TV until I was selling something. And his notion was, until the CD was out, which is his world, why would I put Mariah on TV if she was a week early and the girl that got inspired, a guy, couldn't run to, you know, Virgin Megastore and get it? Well, that was a wasted opportunity. And I'm a big believer in that. The only thing I want to, so the answer is, I would wait. But I want to context this for everybody. My question is, what's the objective? Right? So if the objective is to put out content that drives to the website, that then gets people to sign up for something, buy something, do something, if you're able to execute the business objective outside of the website, I would do that now because you're building up storytelling and leverage and equity that later you can drive to your website and so it feels like you're wasting time and missing the opportunity. So that's a big problem I have with a lot of people. They, they theoretically believe in a process when you can I think that a lot of brands should be monetizing their social media content and a lot of them are trying to use social media content to drive to a website where they're selling banner ads and I just think that they should be selling against the impressions they're getting in social because it's the same game. They've made a religious and historical belief that they need to sell it through the dot com. I'm worried you're doing the same thing. So my answer to you very simply is the way you're gonna make your money, the reason you're doing it, whatever you're trying to do, if you're able to do that through content in its native space and not drive to a dot com, then do it there. Even when you have the website, I would practice doing it there. Elliot asks, how would you recommend looking for a co-founder? Elliot, I think the best way to look to a co-founder, uh, look for a co-founder, excuse me, is to first understand of how honest and self-aware are you with yourself. The number one thing that you want to find in a co-founder, in my opinion, is somebody who checks the boxes and has strengths in a space where you don't. Does she provide the black and white to your gray? Does he provide the magic to your very kind of straightforward? Is he the salesman? Does she love HR? Uh, where you don't want to deal with any of the people. You need to yin and yang. I think it's very important. I'm a big believer in doubling down on strengths, but I do think from a co-founder standpoint, you want to get the check boxes of the core things that drive a business. And so um, I, I think you're looking for that counterpart. But the biggest reason so many of you are going to struggle with this is you're not willing to be honest with yourself. You think you have magic and you're a good salesman. Yeah, you think you can get by with your accounting skills. You think because it hurts your feelings to not bet on your weaknesses. I'm a big believer in my weaknesses. I would actually say, I don't think I've said this very publicly, I've alluded to it, I say that I suck crap at 99% of things. I would actually, this is a new thought, maybe because India's here looking for more content. Show India, I think she deserves it. Um, you know, I think that my weaknesses are as big, if not a bigger factor in my success. It's my willingness to accept my weaknesses. It's my proudness 
of my weaknesses that has allowed me to win. Are you willing to go there? Way too many of you don't want to accept your weak points. You're struggling with it. As a matter of fact, I'm going right into the question of the day. I want you to list on Thanksgiving the weaknesses you have that you're thankful for. That's how important this is. Let's move on. Привет, Gary. My name is Tim and I'm a marketing consultant. I have my own blog, but I don't do any podcasts or videos, basically anything that involves me speaking. That's because I have this terrible Russian accent and I'm worried that it might hurt my trustworthiness. So do you think this is something I should worry about or people from US don't care about my Russian accent as long as I give them tons of value? Thanks. Thank you, Tim. Uh, you know, first of all, clearly I might be dramatically biased because you sound like all my relatives. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, that Russian accent is so endearing to me that like made me feel at home, uh, you know, and so I, I think the, the, look, do I think that there's certain Americans in the American market that will hear that and jump to conclusions? I absolutely do. Let's live in the world we actually live in. I mean, current events in our society prove that like, you know, there's a lot of things still grounded in our society that maybe many of us wish that, that wouldn't be the case. So, do I think that people look at accents as a sign of inferiority, not as much intellect, I absolutely believe that to be true. On the flip side, I think Tim, my friend, you're looking at the negative. What about all the people that do have accents, oh by the way, a crap load. Let me tell you another thing. As a marketing person, you're speaking to entrepreneurs. Do you know the far majority of pure entrepreneurs and who have that hustle? Many of them in this amazing country do have accents. And so I think you're looking at the negative instead of the positives. Um, I do also believe that there's an enormous, and I, I believe the Boehner Nation is a big part of this, because I, look, the way I roll is something that a lot of people don't think is the right way to go. I have too much bravado, too much cursing, too much oomph, too much all of that. And so I think it's massively important. <laughs> nice work. He, uh, I like watching Eitan. He loves, he, he loves getting on the show. This time I'm just really enjoying, I'm enjoying, he doesn't like it as much when I know, which, <laughs> which is a big victory for me. Um, I, I really think that, uh, I really think that people um, need to recognize that uh, there's pros and cons with everything. My intuition is if you think that you can communicate through video or audio podcast, that that is something you should invest in and that you should not worry about the market because the market will come to you if you believe that you're actually good at it, unless you're not. So it comes down to are you good at it? Look, you clearly want to go there because you just made a video question and you got the exposure here. I'm sure you're probably even using the Ask Gary Vee show as a little test case. But don't let the Vayner Nation, who's all gonna jump in here and say, do it, Tim, do it. You're part of this community and they're gonna build you up. The real answer is once you start doing it, do people give a crap? And to me, the fact that I know based on your actions that you wanna do it, the bigger answer to your question is go and do it for the next 100 days and then figure out was it a prejudice or preconceived notions that didn't allow you to have the upside and then you adjust and that's the real answer. My man. Danny asks, in the past, what was your equivalent of that one almond moment from episode 46? What did you potentially miss out on? Danny, I want everybody in the Vayner Nation to go to their uh, copy of Crush It, uh, my first book, if you've got it. And I want you to go to the first 20 or 30 pages where I do acknowledgements. And you will notice that I acknowledge every one of my family members and then a random name. That random name is Travis Kalkinick. Travis is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Uber that is rumored today to be raising at a $40 billion valuation. When they were raising money at a $4 million valuation, I passed, even though Travis is one of my boys and I think is one of the best entrepreneurs in the world. I, at that moment, had just bought a new apartment that liquidated me at a very aggressive level and I wasn't so sure about the idea of Uber that early on, but not that I didn't like the idea, I just didn't think that Garrett, the co-founder of Stumble Upon, and then Uber, who came up with the idea, and Travis, I didn't think they were actually gonna do it. I thought they were gonna hire somebody else, and as somebody who went through, and you've heard me talk about in the past my failures where I put other CEOs in place and I don't drive it. If, if it was them driving it, I would've got in. Uh, hopefully, maybe, maybe not, but not once, but twice, because Travis and I are such boys that I pass on investing in Uber at the angel round. Now, I later invested, and I'm gonna do quite well, but the valuation differences are substantial. 
And that $25,000 investment that I probably would have made because those are the size of the checks that I made right now would be worth in the ballpark of if at this $40 billion valuation, I don't know what the dilution was or the pro rata, but you can very comfortably say that you're looking at somebody who missed an almond by passing in a world where I was writing $25,000 checks to a lot of dumb crap, let alone the guy, the only guy that I gave a shout out to in my book in 2009, two years before Uber came out, that $25,000 investment is probably worth in the ballpark between 75 and 200 million dollars. That's one big f-ing almond. And you know, and I sit here in front of you with ambitions to buy the New York Jets and no question if I made that one decision, that one simple decision that was right there for the taking for me, I would be dramatically further along to my goal right this minute than I actually am. Remember I told you yesterday that I can take 8,000 punches in the face? That's 25,000 punches in the face in one punch. That's what you have to do when you're playing the game. That's what you have to understand when you're an entrepreneur. Those misses are gonna come in my career. That's as big of a phenomenon as I know. Mark asks, what's behind the recent big surge in wine time for you? Mark, what's up brother? Uh, great question. Uh, I can't answer you fully. I can just wink a whole bunch. I can also refer to the fact that I just tasted this insane Chateauneuf de Pop and it is remarkable. Let's link it up in the section if you're a baller and looking for a gift for your family. $82.13 of pure liquid magic. Uh, Yeah, I'm flirting. Stuff's brewing. Also check out winelibrary.com. Let's link it down there. Stunlin, show's face, wrote an incredible article yesterday. Let's link that up. There's stuff happening. Question day was answered or asked, I apologize. Really solid, interesting tone episode on this holiday weekend week. I hope you enjoy your family. I'm very concerned that the Vayner Nation doesn't answer the question at scale. I don't expect a lot of comments because I expect a lot of you not wanting to write out the weaknesses you're proud of. I implore you in this time where we're thinking about all the things we're thankful for, family, health, all these things, I want you to be thankful for your weaknesses. I sit in front of you and have your attention because I so love my weaknesses. This can be a breaking point for a lot of you who are watching this show. Please take it serious. Give yourself 15 to 20 minutes. Start loving your weaknesses. It will change the course of your entrepreneurial and probably overall life. And, uh, and that's that. You keep asking questions. I, oh, Stefan, how about the fact that D-Rock, uh, let's clap it up for Stefan a little bit. His first episode. Look, D-Rock, you got sick. This could be one of these <laughs> Willie Pep moments. I think that's his name, Willie Pep, that, that Boston Red Sox that got hurt and then either Ted Williams or I don't know the full story. Um, but this feels very Willie Pep. We may like the way that Stefan edits this, how it feels, and we just may never see D-Rock again. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. On this episode, I talk about mentorship, paying for jabs, and the single greatest decision 